Welcome back to another episode of the Isn't That Rich podcast. Today we are talking about something that might not be a popular subject. We are talking about delinquent loans. And when people come into the bank to get a loan, their intention is not to, you know, have the loan go bad or not be able to make those payments on a loan. But in a lot of times that happens. Circumstances change, things happen. And we're here today to talk about what to do before that happens for you. Um, and we are so excited to have Alto Pass Farmer State Bank President Tom Jones in here to talk all about that. So welcome on Tom. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to learn. So Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your experience at the bank, because I know you've been here for quite a while. Yeah, so um, the very year I was married is the year I started with Farmer State Bank. And so um, I've been with the bank 33 years. Wow, um, congratulations. This February. Wow. Um, <laughs> 33 years. Before Tom Franks bought it, I was with Farmers and uh, he kind of bought me with the bank, it seems like. <laughs> and uh, he has been, uh, the best boss, uh, the best employer that one could ever have. Anytime you get a, a Christian man or woman that is uh, running a business uh, godly, um, you're just blessed. And he has been a ble- he's been a father figure. So uh, Tom Franks, I probably don't get to probably don't tell him that enough or ever, but he has been a, a father figure to me. So yeah, that's so great. He loves having you on the team. I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. So. So um, when I started at the bank in 91, I was uh, started as a teller. And so I have uh, done, a- and because we were the smallest bank at that time, not only in our Federal Reserve District, but in the three Federal Reserve Districts around us. So uh, $3 million asset bank is all we was uh, when Tom Franks bought us. Wow. And so where we have operations now and where we have uh, different, we were all, we were doing that all in one place. All in one place at Alto. In Alto. Wow. And, and if it, you've ever seen Alto Pass, it is the smallest little bank ever. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> all but. in one place. And and so there was a lot of stuff that was handwritten even back then. Okay. Uh, when you got paid, you got a hand receipt uh, for your paycheck. You're kidding yeah. me. Yeah. So that's uh, wow. totally changed. <laughs> Everything changed. I remember... At the end of the year, it was just a nightmare, and I was always in charge of the end of year process. And I would be, uh, you know, everyone's out partying till midnight. I was at the bank till midnight. Oh my gosh! You uh, making sure everybody got their form sent out on time and wow. and the process. So it, uh, we have definitely moved in the right. The largest loan that we could make because it was an aggregate was. The most you could borrow aggregately from the bank was $50,000 at that time. Oh, my gosh. And you think about wow. that today, you can Well, I wonder, home loans back then, could you even if finance a home? If it was small home, enough and that's the only thing you home. had, then, yeah, we could do it. We could do it. But most of the time, if you had an auto loan and, and uh, it was over, no, we wasn't able to do it. Wow. So, yeah. Tom Frank's completely changed. Uh, and this is the only bank I've ever worked at. I've never oh. worked at any other bank. Farmer State mm-hmm. Bank has always been my bank. And uh, yeah. I'm grateful for that. Well, I love hearing about experience and how it has changed at the bank because I can't even imagine, you know, the tellers have it so different now. They just print a receipt or a money counter for them. They just (laughs) type in a number, you know, and it spits out the denominations they need to distribute out to the customers. And and, um, it's definitely come a long way, I guess. So, So, yeah. So uh, I still work at a teller station on weekends. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. not something I mean, you're you're around the people. I like being around the people. Um, so I've done teller and I've done bookkeeping. Um, obviously I do all types of loans, commercial, real estate, uh, consumer auto. Um, but nothing like having actual people in front of you, being able to talk to them. I mean, when I'm in my office in the back and it never fails, if I don't have my door closed, someone is wanting to talk to me. (laughs) It's hard to get things done some days, but it's, uh, uh, that's what we're about. Yeah, uh, we're about connection. people, right? Yeah. We're here uh, to grow communities, and uh, uh, we're here for, for that. So if we're not here for that, then we're in the wrong business. That's exactly right. That's yeah. so, such a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to get started talking about um, the primary objective today, and that is to talk about what our collections process is. And 
you've recently taken on a role in that collections process, and I would love to hear your experience with that because you took this on five years ago. Uh, it probably More hasn't been that, that. I mean, I don't know. Time flies. <laughs> it just seems to fly it. by. Uh, it's been close to that probably. Yeah. Uh, three to five, I, somewhere in there. I Like I said, I lose track of time. But, yeah, I, um, I've always, most of the, in the past, the way it worked was we did have someone hired that would help on collections. But it was mainly up to each loan officer to call on his own. And uh, what I have discovered... And, and so when I worked my list, and I don't know if Tom Franks would see that or, or what, but uh, when he and Charlie had asked for me to, if I would be willing to take on this role, but my list was tended to be smaller. Now, obviously, I'm in Alto. Mm -hmm. my, li my loans were not as large as some of the others, but still my list would always be smaller than others. And mm -hmm. a lot of that reasoning was is because we were calling. Mm -hmm. uh, we would continually contact our customers. <laughs> And I, we'd got to the point where some of those that are on the delinquent list monthly um, knew the importance of calling me. So before I'd ever get to call them, they would be calling me and say, hey, this is my plan mm -hmm. of action of getting in and paying it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. No call had to be made at that point. But uh, collections yeah, collections need to be done by a right person, right. Uh, mm -hmm. a person that can possibly put themselves in another person's shoes mm. and uh it's hard to do yeah it's it's, it's uh when people uh get a call from the bank they tend to cringe sometimes and mm. we try to try to ease that a little bit um you know we try to un have understanding with far as, as farmer state bank employees we try to have understanding of what they're going through and try to work with them the best that we can so mm. um so collections. Yeah. yeah. So I would love to know what actually is qualifies for a delinquent loan. Is it one mispayment? You know, maybe kind of explain what a delinquent is. All right. Yeah. So when you sign a promissory note, that is a legal document where you are promising to make a payment on a certain date every month or quarter or semi-annual, however it's set up. You're promising to make that payment on a particular date. And when you break that promise, mm -hmm. it's late. Okay. So I have a lot of people say, no, I'm, I'm in my grace period. Now, grace period is different for different loans. Commercial, consumer auto, There, you have a grace period of typically 10 days. Uh, real estate loans, um, residential real estate loans, you have a grace period of 15 days, which means after the 16th date, you're going to get a late charge. But you're late after that first, that after first. that date. And typically, mm -hmm. residential real estate loans on the first are due always on the first. So if it's the second, you're late. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think the officers, uh, we as officers, explain that well enough at times. Yeah. Now, when does it affect your credit score? Mm -hmm. That's that's different. When it affects your credit score is when you become 30 days late. Okay. And... I think that's what we strive for. I get a list every month uh, sent to me of loans that will be 30 days late each month. And that list will vary according to the days of the month. And uh, it it's really hard to build up credit. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's really hard. We know that. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to build up credit. You can tear it down very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can tear it down very quickly. One 30-day late payment can d really have an effect on your credit score. Wow. And now, all of a sudden, you start throwing that a couple times in there. It, it's, you're demolishing it. So yeah. something that you've worked hard for, and I think that's the main goal of our collection department, is to try to help you not get to that stage. Yeah. You know, we're here. We're, we're not here to to bring you down. We're here to try to get you back up and, and to lift you up and, and keep you on the right path. And uh, if we can help your credit score, because credit is looked at on everything, yeah. not only in banking, your insurance is affected by that. And uh, we want we want you to, to keep that good credit score yeah. or, or try to build it back up. So I think that's so good to know, like the heart of the bank. It's not to like hurt you. It's actually to help you. Like yeah. we, we actually care about yeah, you know that. we do. What do you feel like has been some of the most like common reasons um, 
or delinquency? Well, in this day and age, uh, when loans are looked at, when they are made, it's typically done based on two incomes. Okay, Mm -hmm. it's a two income process. So when when your loan is approved, it's it's uh, looked at for debt to income ratios. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have uh, two parties that have applied and now all of a sudden something's happened to one of the parties, Mm. um, death or divorce is the biggest cause of um, of getting a call from us. And uh, so I I would uh, encourage everyone that is listening that if you've gotten a loan and it's based on two parties that if you, you know, yeah, if you care for your loved one, right. Mm -hmm. You need to think about life insurance. Oh yeah. If something happens, I mean, I've always wished that we could get divorce insurance, but uh, that ain't something that's made up yet. But maybe someday. Maybe we'll pitch that to the insurance company and see we can. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like now. Maybe we're on to something. Yeah. But life insurance. I mean, it's uh, for pennies a day. Uh, you could have a policy that could possibly take care of your loan where your loved one is not having to worry about that or something. I mean, that's just one less stress. Yeah. Wow. But that's a lot of what happens is if, if someone has passed away, that income's gone. Right. Or if they're able to draw something off that, it's minimized. Again, that loan was originally approved on two incomes, and now we're down to one, and uh, now they can't afford it. Right. And uh, same with divorce. Um I've seen all kinds of divorces um, where they work with each other, where they don't. Um, My goodness, um, I I don't like divorce. I hate it for couples that I have to go through it for Mm -hmm. whatever reason. Uh, But again, it's based on two incomes typically. And uh, and when one of those is gone, and and I always tell people, you know, you can you may be divorcing the other but you're not divorcing the bank. You still sign that promissory note. You're both liable for it. So when a judge rules that uh, one is responsible for that and they need to get it refinanced, they may not be able to get it refinanced because, again, that home was financed on two incomes, and they may not be able to afford it. And that's uh, that's really hard. It's really hard. hard to have that discussion with the borrowers and then trying to see what's the best route for them to to work through this situation so yeah Uh, but that's the two biggest areas uh death and divorce next comes injuries Um, Mm. if you are in an accident uh, even if it's an accident on the workplace Mm. before workman's comp kicks in i mean that seems to take a while now all of a sudden you're without payments and right. uh, you not, don't have the income to make those payments so uh, communication with your bank during that time is key oh. definitely communication with bank a lot of people are embarrassed when things happen right none of us like to talk about things when they come up Mm -hmm. we don't like to talk about divorce we don't like to talk about injuries we don't like to talk about negative things um, you had faith in your loan officer at one time mm-hmm. to get that loan. Right. Have have faith in your loan officer to help you get through these processes. Yeah, that is so such good. a good point because, you know, we talk about this all the time, but having a relationship with your bank or your loan officer is yep. so important because things happen. Yep. What if you lost your job? And, and that does a lot of stigma yep. comes that personal pride gets in the way, yeah. but, you know, Things happen all the time, every day, yep. and, and, and life happens. So having that relationship such is... such an important, like, because, you know, shame and fear causes people to want to hide and yep. push away, but it's mm. important to know kind of the heart, like we were saying earlier, like yep. communication is so key yep. in those times when you're, you know, feeling shame, when you're feeling afraid and things are kind mm. of look like they're falling apart. We actually want to help you and not harm you more. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um you know, a, a married couple, uh, if they don't communicate with each other, mm-hmm. they're not going to be a married couple very long. They right. got to communicate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a home is one of your largest investments you ever make. <clears throat> you're taking on more uh, debt. That's usually one of your largest payments you're going to be making. Um, you need to be communicating. You need to make sure what you're getting into beforehand is something you both agree on. Yes. Okay. You both agree 
that just is what we're striving for to work for. Now, when those situations come up, lost jobs, we saw a lot of that during COVID. Yeah. Um, a lot of things changed. For a lot people. of things changed during that. And uh, fortunately, we had some programs and we was able to work with a lot of people. I don't think Farmer State Bank was as affected as bad. Uh, we, we definitely tried to work with all of our customers that came forward to let us know that they had issues going mm-hmm. on. Uh, we're not mind readers. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. um, kind of like church about prayer. Yeah. We don't know to be praying for you if you don't tell us. We need to be praying for you. Right. You don't have to tell us what it is, but you need to at least let us know mm-hmm. to be praying for you. Mm-hmm. Um, in this case, we're not mind readers. you got to let us know something's going on and, and you need help. So yeah. um, there there is possibilities. There is ways and ideas that we could lead you in a direction uh, to possibly help. Yeah. you got to be open-minded yeah. and willing for advice and willing to accept that, though, and, yeah. and try to move forward. So, Yeah. I would love to know. So say this is, you know, you're getting, you're going through divorce or you lose your job or a death in the family happens. What is the first step or maybe what is, can you walk us through maybe the timeline of what that looks like? So when should I be calling you and what happens next? Mm. Yep. Mm. Immediately. Immediately. Okay. <laughs> as, as soon as possible. Obviously, if there's a death in the family, um, it's, you know, if we're getting ready to call a list and I find that there's a death, I typically don't try to call anyone immediately on situations yeah. like, you know, there's, they're grieving, uh, there's a mourning time, and uh, and for some, it, it lasts uh, quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you need to get hold of the bank. If there's a, a an intrusion in your income that is going to uh, delay payments. You need to be talking to your bank okay. to see what kind of uh, what can be done. Uh, obviously, a death. Um, it you know maybe you're waiting on that life insurance and you're like I can't. Maybe there's a, something that we can do. We can postpone payments. We can wait until that check comes in. Uh, there, there's everything's different. Every individual's different, and so we need to. You, we need to be communicating with the borrower to find out what's going on to see what direction we need to be going. Yeah. So um, a loss of job. Uh, if you've lost your job, obviously that's a uh, something's happened to your income. What? What's the process? Are you able to draw unemployment? Mm-hmm. What's that going to be? Um, yeah. Are you actively looking for work? I mean, there's jobs out there. Yeah. Are you willing? Are you willing to take that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because you may have been earning this. Uh, I mean, I have been very fortunate. I've never drawn unemployment all my life. I've always been able to work. I may not been able to make what I wanted to make, but I was still willing to work. Right. Because I, Mm. you know, you don't work, you don't eat. You you know, that was the way I was brought up. You don't work, you don't eat. So you, you work on ways to make. So maybe that means you, if you're only able to get a part-time job, maybe you get two part-time jobs. Maybe you have to start cutting out on some other things. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you have to get rid of your cable or your dish or sell that truck even that you're making another payment the vehicle on. of course you may need a vehicle to get but if you got two vehicles <laughs> right you know or uh cell phones are not cheap yeah. um like i said the cable networking uh is not cheap mm-hmm. there's things i mean as simple as getting if you are a coffee drinker and you're buying a coffee a day mm-hmm. i mean I don't know. I don't buy coffee. Uh, <laughs> but if you're one of those that need a, or maybe a, a soda a day, you know, that's two bucks. Mm-hmm. Two bucks a day. That's it $60 up. a mm-hmm. month. Where could you go with $60 extra a month? Um, you know, and that may be cheap for coffee. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe you use or well, coffee Well, I drinkers. even think about this. <laughs> I, Tom, to even just kind of, I went to Sam's Club the other day and I bought a case of Keurig coffee cups. You know how much they were? They were $40 for that big thing of coffee. I mean, that's a lot of money to people, you know, yep. $40 and one drop of the, yep. or swipe of the credit card. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there are ways, you're right, that people can look to cut back that they haven't maybe thought of before and maybe talking to their banker, you can kind of work something out with that. That's really good. Yep. Um, I think you talked to me about um, the importance of, you know, we've talked about first payments on a loan or why something might not be going 
to the first payment, even and that could count as a late loan. Can you explain the importance of writing memos and things like that on a and a loan payment to make sure that it's going in the direction you want it to yeah. be going? So partial payments are great, mm-hmm. but until the full payment's made, it's still delinquent. Okay. So I'm just to make it easy. If you have a hundred dollar payment and you paid $99 on it, that $1 will make it delinquent. It still is it's delinquent. It's still delinquent. Even the though whole you're thing making... counts as delinquent. Okay. Well, that's good to know because yes. people... Because mm-hmm. they think, well, I'll catch it up next week. No, mm-hmm. you're going to have a 30-day delinquency show up on your credit report. Is that right? Okay, so yes. make sure that they're communicating You need to that. make, you know, that's the reason. So when we call, um, we have several that set up on escrow. Okay. Explain that because I... People might not know what escrow means. Escrow is uh, where you have included on your uh, residential real estate loan your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance. Okay. It's set up where you're where you're not having to come up with a large payment all of a sudden at one point of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some, I know what mine is, it's not cheap, mm-hmm. and to come up with that large sum. So it was broken, broken down for you where you're paying that monthly. Well, that's looked at. You may have a fixed rate loan, but if you have escrow, that escrow is reanalyzed every year. Okay. Something that never seems to get cheaper is insurance and taxes. That's for sure. I got <laughs> yeah, a big yeah. increase this year on our taxes. Right. Yeah. And uh, so that's looked at every year. We want to make sure we're collecting enough to be able to pay that for the following year. Okay. So another good point on this is is when you get mail from the bank, open it and look at it. Open your mail, people. Mm-hmm. Because open your mail and look at it. <laughs> Even if it looks like junk, we had a we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Whereas you know we were we had we send out your new debit cards when it's come time to expire, and so many people were throwing it away because they thought it was junk mail. Yeah. But open your mail; open it's your so mail. important. <laughs> open yeah. your mail, look at because you're going to get an escrow analysis, and okay. it's going to it's telling you how it was analyzed, uh, previous year, current, and future. And if you don't understand it, because they are kind of tricky to read, mm-hmm. I understand that, call us. Yes. And we'll love to walk you through that. And um, and maybe the person that answers the phone won't know, and they'll get you connected with someone in Farmer State Bank that will know how yeah. to explain that to you. Uh, but escrow changes annually. And I we see this all the time where people are in the delinquent list because their escrow went up. Okay. And maybe they have a thirty or forty dollar increase a month, and they didn't know it. Right. And they just sent in the previous month. So. And we, maybe their automatic payment oh was still stuck. Yeah. At that old payment yeah. amount. Wow. I wouldn't even think that. That's mm. really good. Yeah. So um, reminders. We was talking about first payments. So. I try very hard to explain uh, when, when I'm doing loans, when the first payment's due, but almost everyone in this day and age has a smartphone. Yes. Uh, very rarely. I, I still see some that with flip phones, <laughs> but almost everyone has a smartphone. And um, you can put reminders on your calendar to remind you when that first payment is. Yeah. And then the, the key is you need to look at your calendar or, or look at your phone daily to see what those reminders are. But... You can be reminded of when that first payment's due. Um, I have a question when it comes back to that escrow because okay. to me, is it, um, how do I know when that changes? I just need to be looking at that statement and noticing or how do we get notified you, that that escrow payment is? You changed? will only get an escrow analysis once a year. Once a year. It comes once in a the year. Mail. That's the reason you get it in the mail. And that's Typically, from the bank. And that's from the bank. Typically on residential real estate loans, especially if you're in the fixed rate market, they are looking at those um, in December. In December, yeah. okay. So you will get something uh, typically at the end of December, 1st of January. Okay. Uh, in the mail saying this is what your rate or escrow will be adjusting to uh, at such and such date. They will have a date that it will automatically roll to. So, but again, you got to open your mail. Yeah. you got to look at it. Um Man, I encourage people to have mobile banking too. Yes. Mobile banking will show that for you. If you don't have mobile banking, I've had some of my older clientele that just... Um, yeah, they're against having they're their bank against account it. on their phone. I get it, yeah. But And one of them was a longtime business of mine. Uh, love him to death. You know him because yeah. uh, you've used him. <laughs> and I fi- he finally got it. And he goes, Tom, I don't know why I didn't listen to you. This is the greatest thing. It's amazing. It's yeah. the greatest thing. I can just sit here and look and I can see where... Because he'd be late every now and then. I'd have to call him. uh, But he goes, now I can just see it. I know when my payments are due. Mm -hmm. I can see it. I can even make transfers to make these payments. He goes, it's just great. He goes, I... 
So I have to tell you, I have to tell you and tell on Tom Franks a little bit because my husband still does not have mobile banking. He calls the tellers all the time. <laughs> yeah, so Lexi, funny. can you tell me the balance on this and this account? I'm like, Tom Franks, <laughs> like, get you, you've got all of these tools available yep. to you and That's you choose yep. not to. But it is, it's such a tool that can help you stay on track. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, it can do every, if you have your account with us, you can have that, you can just make that payment directly from there. So mm. I encourage you not just to have your loan with us, but to, to have your account with us also. It's, yeah. It would just make it so much easier. It just yeah. makes it so, and our app works. It's uh, it's secure. Um, we don't have any issues with our app. I mean, it's uh, never had anyone complain with the app as being hacked or, or anything of that nature. So yeah. it's really a good tool to be using to make sure you're staying on track on your payments because you'll yeah. say when it's due, you mm-hmm. can right. see that. I have a question for you, and this is not to do with delinquency, but, you know, some people might come into more money at some points and they might overpay one month. Does that get paid automatically to the next month or they might think that it might automatically Mm. go towards the next month's bill? Is that true or not true? Because I feel like that might be something to explain to you. It depends. And I've actually spoken with our ID department to actually have a particular train code removed off the mobile banking because I felt like it was confusing uh, our customers of the bank. Yeah. And that was a, a 172 principal only. And if customers on their mobile banking was choosing that, mm-hmm. you know, you think, well, I want to put this toward my principal loan. I, it makes sense. I yes. understand that. Mm-hmm. But when you chose that, it did not count for your payment. You're applying it to principal only. It did oh. not count to your payment. So they're making a payment. It went to principal and it's not counting. It didn't count. Payment. So mm-hmm. therefore they had a full payment due. And uh, so as a delinquent department, again, this is all communicating with our customers. We see you made a payment on this date. Yes. Is this what you intended or did you intend it that to be part of your payment? And most of the time, when I say most, 98% of the time, they would say, well, I thought that was going to part of my payment. I'm going yeah. to pay the rest this date. No, it actually all just went to principal. didn't count for any. Would you oh. like me to correct this for you? And they would say yes, and That's we'd get it corrected. Um, so it's how you uh, – so I've asked our IT department to remove that that particular code. So when you come into the bank, mm-hmm. if you're wanting to make a payment, it you need to communicate well – with the bank of how you want this. I'm making a partial payment. This is supposed to be part of my payment. Mm -hmm. If you tell them that, they're going to run it through that way and it'll count. But if you tell them principal only, know that that is going to go toward principal, but it's not going toward your payment for Mm -hmm. that month. That's so good good to know. Mm -hmm. I also know people have multiple loans for things and they send in a payment and they might not say, this is the loan this needs to be applied for. So really making sure they're saying this goes to my this and this loan specifically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, um, if you're using the night drop Mm -hmm. or or mailing it in, whichever way you're getting it to the bank. If you're not physically bringing, even if you're bringing it physically in, you need to say, this is the loan I'm applying it to. Look, if you explain it well enough, you can send one check for multiple payments and we can break it down and apply it that way. But you need to explain it to us of what you're wanting done. Um, Make sure you're putting the memo uh, of where it is or a note with that. Um, Look, we, we all make mistakes, <laughs> yeah. okay? Uh, Farmer State Bank, I, I'd like to say, man, we're per- we're not perfect. We make yeah. mistakes. So there has been times where we've seen people do that, put in memo, and we've caught it before we called them, and it's like, ooh, they didn't. They meant for this to go here. Mm-hmm. We'll correct it. Um, if they've incurred a late charge, we get rid of it. Right. You know, it's not their fault. They right. did something right, and if. If they have one over 30 days, we get that wiped off their uh, yeah. credit where it's yeah. not affecting their credit report. But most of the time, they don't do that, though. Yeah. They're not putting the memo. They're not putting a note. And uh, if they would do that, it would help dramatically. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine. Communication, communication, like communication. communication. You said we're not mind readers. We we can assume, but you yeah. know what that does. Yeah. So that's, yep. that's so true. So, Tom, let's say the, you know, the collections process has begun. Is yep. there a way for the borrower to get their property back? Okay. So if we're uh, talking, again, collections, we, we, we start calling on delinquent loans, like I said, 
if it's a residential real estate, so we're talking about property, uh, we're, we're going to talk about <coughs> residential. Real, there's other type of properties, or commercial property, mm-hmm. and and so forth. But let's just leave it with residential real estate. Okay. Um, we we will start calling you when that loan is 16 days late. 16. Okay. On the 16th day, you're going to get a call. You're either going to get a letter. Uh, before it's 30 days late, if you've not responded. Again, uh, we talked about communication. Mm -hmm. When you're getting letters from the bank, if you're getting emails from the bank, uh, if you're getting voicemails from the bank, call them back. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to mention her name, Patricia Gearhart, and and I work hard. Patricia is my main calling person. I have a few others in the bank, Stephanie Gijon or Blanca Sanchez, but mainly Patricia. And uh, if you get a call from call her back. Yeah. Um, Sometimes they'll call the loan officer, which is great. They're communicating, but they don't always get that back to us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when they finally do get back with us, they say, well, I talked to so-and-so. So So we we definitely need to enhance that. But collections start with calls. And the lack of communication will cause things to go faster. Okay. Okay, so if we're not getting anything from you, now, typically when you get close to 30 days, now you're getting a text from me. Mm -hmm. And I do find, I mean, let your bank know how you like to be communicated with. A lot of people are at work, they can't answer their call, but they'll get a text. Right. You know, they can look at a text real quick and don't have to pick up, you know. But, uh, and so I get a lot of responses by text. And so let your bank know how you like to be communicated with, but communicate with the bank. So let's say... You're a uh, 45 days late now. Mm-hmm. You, Freddie Mac, USDA, any government loan requires um, a save your home brochure to be sent out. We, we're sending a certified letter out now mm. to so make sure you're getting it. Where you have to sign. You have to sign okay, that you got it. this notice, that you're aware that there's an issue going on. Um, it's getting serious now. When mm-hmm. you get a certified letter from the bank, you need to be calling the bank and talking to us. Again, we don't know. We're not mind read. We don't know if there's something going on. Mm-hmm. You need to be communicating with that, that with us. Um, 45 days in, um, no contact. We're going to continue contacting. Now, there is laws now that is for the customer. Yeah. It is to benefit them. Banks are not out to take your property. No, that's that true. is not our goal. Mm-hmm. We do not want your property. We did not make that loan to get your property back. We no. made that loan to to help you, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's to help you. And if there's a situation come up, we want to help with that situation, mm-hmm. if all possible. Right. So 90 days rolls around. It's getting very serious now. And now we're starting to turn this over to our bank attorney if we've not had any communication with the borrower. Okay. Again, what will happen if foreclosure starts? Mm. That's a demand letter that is being sent out. Uh, obviously, the loans at that point, if you've broken your promise, they're promissory notes. If you've broken your promise to make your payments, a demand letter has been sent out saying you need to pay this. And, and once a demand letter is sent out, what that means is you need to pay all your payments, mm-hmm. late charges, and attorney fees up to date to stop it now. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it's once that's gone out, that's that's where we're at. And um, and I'm trying to communicate with people before that. Yeah. Don't let it get to that point. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's be working. Let's figure out a plan. Let's figure out what you can do. Is there, have you lost your job? Have yeah. you... Um, where you can't quite make these payments, where maybe we can do a forbearance agreement right. or work with you on this. <laughs> is there something you can cut out on during this period of time that would help make these payments? Again, you gotta you got to be willing to humble yourself yeah. to be able to, to do this. I mean, <clears throat> some of these are family homes that right. are, yeah. you know, that's been in the family for some time, and you don't want to lose it. We see that. We don't want you to lose it. No. So foreclosure started. You until it gets to that court, yeah. you still have a way. So you can. Yeah, so absolutely. if you, you know, you figure out a way until, yeah. the, okay. So yeah, you, you can, can still keep back. your property if you bring your loan current. So there may be a way. You may be able to go to family and say, mm-hmm. man, we're struggling and we need help. And can you do this with us? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe your debt to income is where you can afford another. Uh, and you just start another job. Maybe you've gotten behind. Maybe there's something that can be done on that where your debt can, 
to income can afford you another payment to get you current. Um, I hate to borrow money to pay debt. Yeah. Um, it's not wise to do that. Mm -hmm. But there's times when you need to do that to help you get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, temporary, temporary borrowing, not long-term borrowing. So, But yes, you can get your property back. There's still ways because we're going to try to do everything to let you keep your property. But you got to be able to you got to be willing to work with the bank. Yeah. You've got to be communicating. Um, there has to be a plan of action to get those payments current. Yeah. Do you have any examples that you can think of where, you know, you have had these calls and you were able to bring it current and, you know, the customer walked away happy and. Yeah. Well, there, um, through my lifetime, I've had many situations. Yeah. I remember one uh, where they had gotten debt strapped and uh, sure. they had uh, did a bunch of credit cards and yeah. they just credit cards that were, they were paying now 22, 25%. I know. Interest. I've seen those credit cards that go up to like 30% yep. uh -uh. interest, yes. man, people get in trouble. And so sure. we did a debt consolidation mm -hmm. to be able, they had equity in their home and we let them down that path of, you know, we need to get rid of credit cards. Yeah. Uh, you got to bring that down. We can't, you know, the, and usually when they got to that stage, they're willing to work with that and uh, and not go back to that. Uh, so that's a, a situation where we've helped people before. Uh, mm -hmm. If they have equity in their home to do that, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it very difficult. I've seen, here. here's a huge one. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm moving around here. <laughs> That's okay. I like to move around when I talk. <laughs> Do it all I can to keep my hands down below the table. You don't have to. My hands are usually here, Tom. <laughs> um, here's a huge one that people don't realize. And I and I did some calculations. I did a, a, a speech uh, to some businesses uh, through Freddie Mac, a 50-year uh, of what the average rate had been. And uh, over the 50 years, the average rate was 7.25%. Okay. So when we get to talking about 7% rates right now, yes, you know, it's really not that bad. Right. <laughs> I mean, yes. when you compare it to two and three quarter, 3%, yeah, it's bad. But <laughs> that was the un uncommon. Yes. Um, when I first started the bank, and again, 91, in the 80s, before I started there, there was Freddie Mac interest rates of 18%. Yikes. So oh when you talk about seven now, it's not that bad. Right. <laughs> you you got to look at the other extreme. Mm -hmm. So let's say $150,000. And I've had, and the reason I'm bringing this up, I have walked people through this mm -hmm. and it's been eye opening for them. But $150,000 loan at 7%, your monthly payment, if it's a 30 year loan, roughly is uh, close to $1,000, $997. If you, uh, your interest on that monthly, you're, you've got a daily interest factor. What that means is, is the interest that is accruing daily on their principal amount of the loan, you, you, I'm not going to go through the calculation, but that's what that is, mm -hmm. is how much interest every day that loan is accruing, yeah. every day. In this particular case scenario, it's $28.76. <clears throat> If you let it go five days, five days past the due date, nothing's going toward principal. It's all going toward interest. Okay. So you say, well, what's, you know, I've got a grace period. You know, I'm not getting late charge. Yeah, but you're not reducing your principal. You got a 30 year loan. You may have went a few years where you've always been 35 days late uh -huh. or so. Nothing's been reduced on your principal. <gasps> Wow. Oh Nothing's I been reduced. I feel like that's principal. an eye opener for people that are, oh, that's yeah. interesting. And they say, well, that's not fair. The banks, well, this was, this, yeah. this is the reason banks are there yeah. to help you get into homes, mm -hmm. but we're also there to, to help you get that home paid for. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've had people in the years, I've set them down and said, this, I want you to see what's been happening here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Typically now, when we do loans, we have what's called an amortization schedule. It shows you how much interest is going toward uh, principal and interest. And typically on a 30-year mortgage, on this scenario, $150,000 loan, when you're paying your uh, payment, this is what's going toward interest, yeah. and this is what's going toward principal. Huge difference. Yeah. So about halfway through the loan, it's about half and half. You you're equal of what's going toward interest. Yeah. Now, as the loan gets smaller and it's day down, now the interest is down here, and this is what's going toward principal. So with that being said, you want to pay this loan off quickly or quicker or however you want to word that. 
you want to pay more on your principal. Right. You know, uh, you don't want to wait till it gets down here. So if you do have money coming in on your tax returns. Yes, it's a perfect time to yeah. talk about that. Because if you got money coming in on your tax returns, that's a good way to bring your loan current if it's behind. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's also another way to pay down on your loan quicker. Yes. Um, and again, that's a wording that needs to be said. I just want this to go toward principal only. Do you, okay. Or do you want it to be multiple payments to count in case a hard time does come up? Where right. you, continue, you don't want to just make a bunch of payments all at once and right. say, okay, next month I'm going to skip. It was still accruing interest during that time. Yes. So if you pick up four months later, you made four payments and you didn't make payments four months. Now you got four months worth of interest. You're not going to reduce any principal for quite some time. Yeah. So it's very important um, to talk to your banker about this. Yes. What's the best way to handle this? So oh, yeah. and input that. So that's so interesting. Good I don't point, know if I answered Tom. your question or not, but no, that's that's <laughs> yeah, great. That's I think. I've learned a lot just from talking about these few things. Like I had no idea, you know, the biggest thing I take away is that first day. If you're late one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a late, that's late. You're late. Breaking Mm -hmm. your, you're late. You've broken your promise with the bank. And Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're, uh, we're not calling at that point because you do have a grace period, but that grace period is only where you're not getting assessed an additional late charge. Yeah. Late charges add up. Yeah, they sure do. They, they add up. I mean, uh, $35 uh, a month late charge. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's over $400 a year right. if you're letting it do it every month. Right. Why and do that? if you're that? thinking about that $9.99, $45 is a lot. Our $35 is a lot out of that. It's a yes. large percentage of that. So yeah. it adds up fast. It adds up very quickly. Well, I'm so glad that you were able to be here today to kind of talk us through this because it happens more often and it's not something that people like to talk about. It's yeah. you know, like we talked about earlier. It does make, you know, it's not a fun thing to talk about, but mm-hmm. I do think that we need to, people need to know what happens if you are late. So thank you so much for yeah, being here. So. If you could leave anybody with one last takeaway from this episode, what would it be, Tom? Well, there's again, I've, we, I've said it all the way through. Communicate <laughs> with your bank, yes. open your mail and, Talk to your banker. Yeah, uh, they're there for you. Um, we're here to make sure that it, it, your life. Uh, we're, we're here to service the community. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. We're a community bank. Um, we're not a large bank that you're just a number or uh, on a piece of paper. You are a person to us, mm-hmm. and you're a person that that matters. Yeah, and uh, we we want you to succeed. That is our strife and goal mm-hmm. is to see you succeed. So communicate with your banker. Um, communicate when you get calls. If you get calls or letters, call back, yeah. talk to us. Um, let us know what's going on. For sure. Yeah. That's so good. Perfect. That's so good. If people want to talk to you more about this or, you know, they do want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Yep. So uh, I am located in the Alto Pass facility. My um, favorite brand. <laughs> <is> yep, <laughs> uh, the big town of Alto Pass. <laughs> the best bank in Alto Pass, by the way. <laughs> and uh, our number uh, that they're in Alto is 618-893-2464. Or you can reach me by sending me an email. If you have an email question, uh, it's tjones at myfsb.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming. Yep. I'm glad you, you had me here. We'll see you next time. So Jill, where do we go from here? Be sure to check out our show notes for this episode and also be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter. And we'll see you next week. See you next week.